We're here this morning of, I like to call it a celebration of Lou's life. I know it's hard, I've been there, you've been there, and it's never, never easy. But if we just celebrate the life that she lived, and you and I that know, knew her throughout life, everybody loved her. Everybody loved Lou. And I don't know an enemy that she had, but today we'll be together here, celebrate her life as we knew her. But let's just bow our heads together and ask God to help us. We need God. Our Father, today we gather here. Our hearts are heavy. And Lord, it's a sad occasion but we realize that there's a meeting on the other side. We ask God today, the Spirit of the Lord, would minister to everybody here. And God, we commit Lou into your hands. We will miss her, but she's having probably the greatest times of her life with our friends. And we're grateful for that, and that's our hope. We ask now, God, that you fill this room with your presence. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Psalms 116 and verse 15. I felt this would be an occasion for this verse. I have never done a funeral where I felt more uneasy than this today because of Lou. She's just Lou. But the psalmist wrote, and he said, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Precious, and that, that confused me for a while. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the word precious in the Hebrew means valuable. For the people in this world at New Lou, and we know speak in terms of value as, you know, having a lot of money, nice homes, and all that stuff. Lou never owned all that. But the Lord says she's precious, meaning valuable. She's very valuable to him. Amen. And for you and I that knew her here and love her, she was very valuable to us as well. She never owned a home. She never drove a car that I know of but yet she was valuable. Isn't that something? The word of the Lord said precious in the sight of the Lord. In his sight today, she's valuable, precious. It, always, it also means brightness. So she's a, a bright lady. And like I said, everybody that knew her loved her. And we love her. And we'll always do that. But I'd like to think in my mind today that she's gone to be with the Lord. The Bible teaches us to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. And I tried to picture in my mind a little reunion in heaven. And I suppose Tommy probably cracked a little joke at her, you know, and how that would go. Yeah. If you knew Tommy here, you know him there. So, But Lou was bright. She, I don't know if she ever had an enemy. If she did, I didn't know about it, but the brightness of her smile. And I can also think of those times that she could give you what we call an evil eye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if she, she didn't like what you did, she could give you an evil eye. I used to go over to her house a lot, and uh, I'd go to where her room was, don't you come across that door. <laughs> and I, when I'd catch her out of the room, I've actually gone in the room, sat down in her chair, and she'd come run me out. <laughs> but she was a bright. She brought sunshine and brightness to all who knew her. And that word precious is also, in the Hebrew, costly. You guys, girls, look down at the finger today and got that big diamond on it. It's costly, right? So the Lord said precious or costly 
in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. It costs the Lord something to redeem us. It costs a great price. He paid a great price for each of us today that we could be saved. And one great thing about Lou was that she accepted Christ into her heart a long time ago. And that probably one of the wisest decisions she ever made was to accept Christ. That word precious, or precious in the Hebrew is also honorable. I think Lou lived an honorable life. She didn't go to jail. She didn't rob any banks. I think she was an honorable person. And it also means precious reputation. As I've said thus far, Lou had a good reputation. And that precious is something to be prized. You ladies got all these big jewelry, jewel on your fingers and stuff, and that's a prize to you and something to be prized. 1 Peter 1 and 19 tells us that, we're, that we were redeemed by the precious. The word precious again. Valuable, brightness. We were redeemed with that. We were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He went to Calvary and shed his blood that we could be saved. And one thing about heaven, I've never read where there's any funeral. Never in another funeral we'll live with God forever. And I'm looking for that day. Are you? Amen. Amen. The last few months of Lou's life have been kind of restless, I would think. She needed rest. Nothing more valuable to a worn out body than to lie down at night to go to sleep with the anticipation of rising the next day with refreshed new life. And that's what Lou has done. She's, she's at rest at rest with the Lord. Amen. I mentioned I thought in my mind about the reunion in heaven. Of course, I think about Tommy. He was one of the greatest friends I ever had. And how he would greet her in heaven. But she also has relatives there other than Tom. I remember her mother. And I'm sure that reunion is great with them today. They meet again. And we will meet again if we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. So, these past few weeks for Lou has been kind of restless. She told someone the other day that her and God was working it out. So I'm sure that it's all worked out now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The family has been very precious to, to me personally and to my family. Uh, Sean mentioned the other day that we uh, feel more like family to them than we do aunts and uncles because we've been together a lot more. Sometimes we don't see the rel blood relatives that much, but with this family, we were very close. Sean took a day <coughs> off to come to work or come to this this here because he wanted to be close to the family. My son Jimmy's in South America, Mission Field, sends his regards. And of course, Todd, you know, he's kind of <laughs> rowdy. <laughs> but, he's all right. Todd's a good but your family to us, amen. So now Lou is at rest. And there the scripture teaches us that there remaineth yet a rest. There remains yet ahead a rest for the people of God. And I'm looking forward to that, aren't you? Oh, yeah. 
When you get 82, you're looking forward to a rest. Yes. Amen. Amen. Revelation 6 and 11. He saw a scene in heaven, and then this is what it was. A group of people, they had white robes. The white robes were given to them. And everyone, it was said to them, they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also, their brothers. So we lose resting today, waiting on us. And now we can determine in our heart that we were, we were gonna go and meet and be a family again. Scripture teaches us that we are strangers and pilgrims here on this earth, and we're just here for a while. And Lou was here for just near 80 years old. Now she's gone to receive the crown. Amen. I think the older we get, and you, some of you folks are way behind me, the older we get, a little less attached we become to this world. The world doesn't mean as much to us now as it did. But let's, re let's picture today Lou living a life of joy in heaven, a place of harmony. We're living in a, a world of turmoil, a place of joy, in a place of eternal rest. I long for that myself. Revelation 14 and 13, listen. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. And when Lou May accepted Christ as her Savior, so she went home. She is blessed. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. She's blessed, and we'll miss her. And it said, goes on to say, from henceforth, they rest from their labors. The lifetime that Lou worked and did all she could do, and now retirement came, but the rest didn't show up. There was still turmoil but now she's resting from her labors. And the scripture says that her works will follow them. Lou didn't build a church. She didn't preach. She didn't sing. But the labors that she did, small as they may seem to some, yet the works that she did will follow her. Be a great time we get to heaven. For some, we've labored for God. We've done what we could do. But there's a reward. God promise, promises a reward. So, with loved ones today, Lou's going to be with her loved ones. I'm sure that Lou May is thrilled today to meet her mother again. If our mom's gone to be with the Lord, we can't wait for that time as well. So she is with the loved ones today. What a, what a reunion they're having. They're with Jesus Christ. Scripture teaches us that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we need to call on the name of the Lord to escape this wicked, cruel, mean, hateful world. Amen. So today she's with her family on the other side. She's with God. She's with the Holy Spirit. She's with angels.
What could be better than that? Huh? Luke, four, Luke 13 and 29. Someday all the saints will all meet together. Scripture teaches us that they will come from the, from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. And shall sit down in the kingdom of God. Scripture also teaches us that if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we would give all men most miserable. Hey, if this is all you've got and it's all you're going to get, I want you to enjoy it today if you could. But there's a day coming that the saints of God will be rewarded. Not just for the accomplishments that we've done, what few we may have, but because we accepted Christ, God will reward you. Amen. He will bless and honor you for your faithfulness. Reward. As a Christian, we'll receive a crown of life. Doesn't seem to be so precious when we're young, a crown of life. But we get that crown, there'll be no more dying, no more tears. First Corinthians chapter 13 is called a love chapter, referred to as a love chapter in the Bible. It goes on with a lot of different gifts and sounds and symbols and so forth and serving and giving. And, but the last verse, verse 13, talks about love, it talks about faith hope, and love. Lou, Lou had a hope. She had a hope that we'd all meet in heaven one day. She had a hope that all of us together would meet up there to live forever, receive a crown of life. She had that hope. She had hope for her family to be saved, except in Christ. That's all up to us now. She had faith in her God that God was going to see her through. As someone said the other day that she told them that her and God was working this out. She had faith in God. She may not have left very much in this world. Certainly no riches, no fine homes, no fine jewelry. But she had faith in God that she would have a place to live forever. Faith, hope, and love. Paul said the greatest of these was love. And Lou had a lot of love. She loved her nieces. She loved her family. Sometimes I think she even loved me. <laughs> I may have aggravated her a few times, and I'm sure you guys did. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 29, or 2 and 9 rather, tells us that I have never seen, I've seen a lot of things in this world, I've been, I've traveled a lot. Eyes have never seen here in this world. And my ears have never heard a lot of things. I've heard a lot of things, but Paul was writing and saying, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and neither has it entered into the heart of man. I mean, this is something beyond our imagination that God, look at this, that the things that God has prepared for those who love him. 
Uh, God is, he cares about us and he has provided some great things. Some of the greatest things that are greater than I've ever seen. I've traveled, I've been in Rome, I've been in Egypt, I saw the great pyramids and I've been around a lot. But that's pale in comparison to what God has made and providing for us in the future. I've heard a lot of things and it's wintered in my heart, but the greatest thing I've ever heard was Jesus Christ loved me, died for me, made provisions for me and for you. What a great future we have for those who love him. We need to love God. The world is getting cold. The world is getting mean. We need to love God. I want to leave you with a scripture, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 29. <coughs> Tells us that God giveth power to the faint. For all of us who are weak and weary, God gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, God increases strength. He needs to increase strength in thee day by day. So. Tells us in this world that even the youth will faint. They will grow weary. Young men shall utterly fall. We think about some of the great sports figures and their strength and how they can, how athletic they are. But they will utterly fall. It goes on to say, but they that wait on the Lord. We wait on the Lord and they said he will renew our strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. That eagle can soar into the heavens. Say, preacher, we can't do that. Lacking the strength, we can do that through Christ. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. When we come to funerals and we think it's all the end, there's a hope I want to leave you with a hope today I'm thankful to God for the friendship that God has given me through people like Lou I'm thankful today that I can be here for her young people they get tired and they get weary but God's power and God's strength, it never diminishes, it's still there. <coughs> and we receive that by faith. God is never too busy to hear you. He listens when you call. Sometimes we get so busy we don't talk to God. But when we lie down on our bed at night and just lie there and think for a moment, I can talk to God. Can't talk to the president. Can't talk to senators and congressmen. But God is never too busy to help you. One of my sons used to call and say, Dad, you're going to be home. I need to talk. And we meet together and talk. Well, we can talk to God. Any hour, any day, you can talk to God. So let's, let's begin to call on him. Amen. When we feel crushed, call on God. God will stop. You can stop heaven. Amen. Call on God for strength today. You who are weary, 
The last few weeks and months have been kind of wearisome for this family, but we pause and call on God, and then we wait expectantly, waiting for God's promise to come to us. Help us during this difficult time. It is difficult, isn't it? Waiting and trusting on him to fulfill his promise. I heard a guy say that God doesn't always pay off on Friday, but God pays off. So we wait for God to come to us. Like the eagle that soars into the heavens, he goes above his troubles. Soars above and he waits until something else occurs. So we wait for our departure. We wait on God. Today I trust that God's Spirit fills this room now. And God speaks to your heart as well as mine. That we can leave here today and put our faith, our hope, our trust in Him. He's the only way out of this world. The governmental system today is out of tilter, as you know. Everybody running frantically trying to find a cure for whatever's going on. But we wait today. We wait for a sure and certain hope that there will be a resurrection. This isn't the end for Lou. And I'm glad that you've come today to show your respects. You being here today, you bless this family. They'll think about you throughout the day or whenever they meet at home, they will think about you. And I extend my sympathies today to this family. I share in your loss. I have lost a friend and you who knew her, she was your friend as well. So today, let's put our heart, trust, faith, hope in God that we will be ready when our day comes. Amen. Let's take a moment right now to look to God for help and strength. Father, we look toward heaven. Of course, God, we look to each other and we draw strength from each other. But Lord, that isn't enough. We need you to come today and minister, God, to this family. And Lord, that we can rejoice now that Lou's in a better place. She's there with you. No more heartaches, no more sickness, no more doctors, no more ventilators, no more of that. She's there with you. God, give us the faith, the courage, and go on to leave her with you and that we will meet again real soon. I believe we'll meet again, Father, because I believe your holy word. I ask God today, the Spirit of God, to minister to every soul that's gathered here, and we're thankful for them who've come. Thankful, Lord, for those who showed their respects to the family, to Lou. And God, you reward them and bless them. And we ask it all today in Christ's name. Amen.